Hi everybody, welcome to Our Worship Sound. My name is Peter, and back in the day, I used to be on YouTube. I know that was a long time ago, um, but I'm back tonight. I'm going to record a couple of videos um, showing you some things that I've learned about Apple's MainStage program. And that uh, MainStage can be kind of complicated. Um, when I first started using it about nine or ten months ago, um, there were some things that were kind of intimidating to me. And uh, as I've used it, I, I think there's some ways to maybe communicate some things more simply. And one of those things has to deal with the term patch. Okay, so patch is one of the levels within MainStage. It's the most basic level. And that term is, is unhelpful to me for a couple of reasons. One uh, is that as a keyboard player, when I think of a patch, I'm used to having that mean a sound on my keyboard. If I dial up a patch on my keyboard, it's talking about one sound. And a patch in MainStage can be one sound, but it can also be way beyond that, okay? The other reason why patch is confusing to me is because it doesn't really go with the other terms that the program uses. Um, there are three different levels within MainStage. The top level is a concert. When you open a project file within MainStage, you're opening a concert. I get that. Within the concert, you have one or more sets. Um, I get that because you go to a concert and it might have one or more sets to it. But then within a set in MainStage, you have one or more patches. And that doesn't make sense to me because when you go to a concert, it has sets, uh, but it doesn't have patches, it has songs. Okay, so getting maybe getting past the terminology patch will help us to kind of broaden our understanding of what it actually can be and what it is. Okay, first of all, I think a patch in main stage just means a collection of settings, whatever those settings are, but it's a collection of settings that you can use at any given moment within main stage, okay? And let's back up for a second. If we go to a concert and it has sets, and within those sets are different songs, I think for the time being, it's helpful for the purposes of understanding what a patch is to think of as a patch as being equivalent to what you're gonna use for a song. For, so if you think of having one patch per song and all the settings you wanna have for that song, whether it's the, the synthesizer sounds you wanna use, whether it's the, um, the auxiliary, sends for your different effects. Maybe it's an input for an external instrument. Um, maybe it's different hardware settings. Those can all be contained within a patch. Okay, it can be just one sound, but it can be also be all these other settings. For now, it's an, over, it's an oversimplification, but for now, let's think of it as a patch is what you're gonna use for a song. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go to uh, main stage and let's uh, break down what this means a little further. All right, to bring things into perspective, let's talk about the three different levels within MainStage. The top layer of MainStage is called a concert. As I said, when you open a, a project file in MainStage, you're opening a concert. Any setting that you make when you have this concert level highlighted, any setting that you make will be in effect no matter what patch you're on, no matter what set you're on. Okay, so for example, if I set up auxiliary channel strips for reverb and delay, as I've already done here, those are gonna be in effect no matter what patch I'm on. They're gonna be in effect all the time, okay? Now, working back down, we have another layer, not that, we have another layer called a set layer, and a set is just basically a folder that contains one or more patches. We're not gonna deal with sets too much today, or at all, really. All right, so what we're gonna be dealing with are patches. Patches are the base level, any settings that you make at the patch level will only be in effect for that patch. When you switch to a different patch, it'll go to different settings that you have for the other patch. Okay, so there are a lot of different settings that you can make at the patch level. So let's talk about some of the settings a patch can contain. First of all, we've created a new patch by clicking the Add a New Patch button in the patch list window. Now with that new patch highlighted, not the concert, but the new patch highlighted, we're going to create um, a new channel strip for this patch so we can create a sound for it. So we're gonna go over here to the channel strips window, click add a channel strip. You see we have four different options for different types of channel strips. We're gonna choose the second one and create a software instrument. For now, uh, we're gonna create a keyboard sound. So now that we have this channel strip selected, we can browse the different sounds in the Software Instrument Channel Strip Inspector. That's a mouthful. We're gonna go over here to Synthesizers, then Synth Leads, and select Analog Lead. 
And if you play a few notes, you can hear that we have a sound dialed up for that patch. Let's add another patch. In a previous video, I used a four layer setup where I had four different sounds going on at once. I had a piano, a Rhodes, a strings, and a pad sound. I'm gonna import that as a patch here. Now I have this set up already. You won't see this option because this is a custom patch that I have set up. So I'm gonna import that four layer patch. And now with my two patches, I have one patch with a single synth sound and another with four sounds layered together in one patch. If you look over here, I have a channel strip for piano, roads, pad, and strings. And you can also see those layers visually represented in, those, in the workspace window. Also, individual patches can each have their own hardware settings. On a patch with lots of sounds, like this four layer setup, I use the dials on my hardware controller to mix the volumes of the different sounds. And with my Akai LPD-8, I typically use the upper row of knobs to mix the volumes of different sounds. And to do that, I'm going to assign those knobs to volume over here. So I'm going to click on this knob in the software, click map parameter, and then click the volume slider for that sound. I'm also going to do that for the second one and map it to this slider. I already have the other one set up. So if I move these dials on my hardware controller, you can see that there's a corresponding action in the software. And that's what I do to mix the volumes for a patch with multiple sounds. If I have just a single sound, I will still set up one uh, knob to control the volume because different sounds often have different volumes or I need to change the volume throughout the song and that's an easy way and a consistent way to do it. But what I'll also do is set up something in the bottom row to control different parameters for that sound. For example, if I have a synthesizer sound, I will usually assign these two knobs to control filter cutoff re and residence. So I'm going to open my synthesizer here and assign those. This one for cutoff frequency and this knob for resonance. And now if I play this, you'll hear the effect that the filter cutoff and the resonance have. So a lot of possibilities um, for real-time control as you assign different hardware settings. And like I said, um, I, I, made those set, I made those assignments at the patch level. So when I go to the next patch, the hardware settings change and adapt for whatever I've set up for that particular patch. Okay, now let's talk about effect sends at the patch level. We already have a delay and a reverb setup at the concert level. But what if I have a song that needs a different sort of delay? We can add that delay send at the patch level so it's available for that song and then it's out of the way for the other songs. So let's uh, create a new patch. I'm going to actually import a Whirly patch. So Whirlitzer patch. It's a standard one in main stage. And I'm going to add just a simple eighth note delay to it. So what I'm going to do is come over here to the channel strips window add a channel strip, click auxiliary. It's going to set up a new send on bus three. So on that channel strip, I'm going to use a preset that I set earlier for an eighth note delay using the stereo delay and come over here to my Wurlitzer channel strip, select that bus, give it some send level, and then you'll hear the effect of that delay. All right, so that's a cool delay effect for that tempo and that patch. But if we click on a different patch, you'll see that it's out of the way. It's not using any processor. And um, it's, it's a much cleaner setup because I only need it for that patch. One more thing about patches, and that is it's helpful to label the patches you create. Um, as I said, I, I tend to equate one patch per song. 
So I will usually label a patch once I get it set for that particular song. That way it helps me quickly and easily find the patches I need and getting ready for the next time I play live. Um, I want to let you know I'll be working over the next few weeks to make a lot of my custom patches available as premium content on my website. And uh, hopefully they'll be a great way to add some new sounds to your repertoire or just to, to get some new ideas on how you can create and use your own patches. So more info on that coming soon. For now, you can find some free um, download items available through OurWorshipSound.com at the extras page. And uh, also be sure to subscribe to the email list and follow on Twitter and Facebook um, so you'll be uh, aware when those uh, new changes and those those uh, new items are being rolled out. So thanks for joining me. It's been a long time coming with this video. I promised it a long time ago. I hope it was worth the wait. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to send me an email through the website or leave a comment uh, on the channel page below here. So thanks for watching and we will see you soon.